Say it with me, everybody. Beetlejuice. 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 All right, he didn't come. I guess the juice is not all the way loose. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, the sequel to the original Beetlejuice that came out back in 1988. Now, of course, I'm in my Sam Worm costume. My sister wanted me to partake in this. She is a major fan of the original Beetlejuice. She dressed up for it. She said, will you join me? I said, sure, I guess. She bought me this outfit, and I said, I'll wear it for the review. And for me... I really enjoy the original Beetlejuice. I think it is such a fun time. It is one of those movies that I loved revisiting as a kid. And this movie, I never thought was going to ever actually get made. It felt like one of those movies that would just pop up like on Facebook as like one of those fake movie posters and everyone would be like, Beetlejuice is back! And I'd have to be one of those people that says, guys, it's not back. I, trust me, it's not real. Gotta take this <laughs> this thing off it's bothering me but I, I would tell people that and then it actually got announced that it was real Michael Keaton was coming back Tim Burton's coming back Winona Ryder's coming back and of course Jenna Ortega is coming into here now who is a big up-and-coming rising star and all these things were kind of coming to fruition and then the first teaser trailer came out and that was like the manifestation that this is a real film and I got more and more excited as I kept seeing things about it. And I've been pretty open on my channel saying that like Tim Burton hasn't really impressed me over the last couple of decades. Like I've liked Frank and Weenie and I liked uh, Corpse Bride. But other than that, I really haven't been particularly fond of a lot of his films within the 2000s. And for me, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I was hoping was going to be able to bring that back. And I think for the most part, it's probably one of his better movies in terms of live action over the last couple of decades. But I think there are certain things in here that did disappoint me just a tad bit. If you're going here for a fun, zany time to get you ready for the spooky season, I think Beetlejuice 2 will suffice for you. But make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like subscribe button, and do understand I will not be spoiling the movie. But let's talk about what the film's about, because after a family tragedy, three generations of the Dietz family return home to Winter River, still haunted by Beetlejuice. Lydia's life is turned upside down when her teenage daughter, Astrid, accidentally opens the portal to the afterlife. Now again, this is directed by Tim Burton. And it stars everyone, as I already mentioned. And to really start out with my pros, because I love talking about the positivity of film, it's the cast. Ryder is just great. And it's great to see Lydia older, having a daughter now. How does that affect her? Where did she go in life? And that was one of the things that I was so particularly fond of and actually seeing. And for the most part, I like the choice of what they did with Lydia in here. I think that's actually one of the things that I really enjoy. I, when it comes to the legacy sequels, I like seeing where our characters that we grew up with, where they ended up at. And this is one of the few times where I've gone, that makes sense. I like where they ended up with Lydia. And certain moments, and specifically where it kind of detaches her from certain aspects of her family, it also makes sense to there. But I'm happy how they brought that to life. Same thing goes for Catherine O'Hara, who is just... So wonderful in here. And in some ways, I used to think as like a kid that she was the most annoying part of the original movie. But like now being older, I, I find her part a little bit more funny. And I actually think she nails it in here. Part of me actually liked a little bit more of her humor in this film than the original. And then everyone is, of course, obsessed with Jenna Ortega. I love her in Scream. I really liked her in Wednesday. And she is phenomenal here as well. Not in it as much as I expected. But I liked her just enough. Get me wrong, when I say she's not in here as much as I expected, this is actually definitely more of a Lydia Dietz movie than it is a Astrid film. So don't get me wrong with that. She's in here a lot, but I would have liked to see if she was a little bit maybe more of the main focus. Alongside that, of course, Michael Keaton comes back as Beetlejuice, and he is just perfection. And I don't think any of us didn't expect for Michael Keaton to come back as perfection. Perfection back in 1988, and he's still perfect in here, and he doesn't phone it in, and it feels so great. Like, even when Beetlejuice is going insane places, it still works. And some of the new cast around here, Justin Tharax, I, I thought was fun. I liked him in here. Willem Dafoe is outrageous, but also great. And Monica Belushi... I liked in this, 
but there was not enough of her, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in my issues. That's actually where it jumps me over to Tim Burton's direction, because it really does feel Tim Burton came straight out of the 80s with this movie with just modern technology, not towards the practical effects, because the practical effects are really good, I'm going to talk about that in a second as well, but Tim Burton did a great job directing this. It really does feel like his classic Tim Burton self in terms of the story, in terms of the zaniness, in terms of the way that he mixes humor with horror, and overall it just really gratified to that and I love seeing all the different prosthetics and effects and again that practical nature to it all the way that the sandworms look in here the way that some of the makeup on some of the creatures look like such as Bob or some of the other spirits in here that really just took me back and made me smile from of course the original movie some of the ways that some of the other ghosts had died in here it's interesting to see Monica Belushi specifically her introduction in this movie is probably one of my favorite moments in the entire film and specifically the body horror that comes from that and I love how Tim Burton always plays into that zany territory and always brings such a creative aspect of that to life and it's one of the few things that always makes me smile and giddy with delight when I watch any of his movies. Even if it's a movie that I don't like, the creative aspects of how he mixes horror into there is always my favorite. And that is one of the things that I can truly say in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, that they really nailed down. Really even some of the things that Michael Keaton does, uh, you've probably seen in the trailer where he says, Lo loose your guts and the guts fly out. But there's other aspects to that entire scene that just had me cracking up and smiling at the same time. And then, of course, adding on top of that is Danny Elfman coming back to do the score, which just makes you feel like you're at home in ways that this movie feels that it was actually something that would have been crafted in the 80s, even from the opening credits, which just made me, again, smile and feel like I'm back at home, which is something that I feel feel like Tim Burton was trying to do was solidify and make us feel safe here. But that's where I want to start getting to my mixed aspects. So let's jump over to my mixed aspects, which really just start to come to fruition with certain things that maybe might bother some people, maybe won't bother others. I didn't find that any of this movie any had any of those scare moments to it. Not saying that the original movie was scary, but it always felt like a great gateway to horror for so many kids. But like, especially when they're trying to like scare the people out of their house and for me, like when she tears off her face, that used to creep the shit out of me. And I didn't feel that any of those moments were particularly really in here. Alongside that, I will also say some of the choices of certain people not coming back. I understand that there was one way, shape or reasons in, in the real world. I didn't really like some of the decisions or like, oh, this is the reason that they're not there. It kind of felt half assed and that won't bother everyone. It didn't fully bother me. But it just kind of sat there like, oh, okay. Which that brings me to my biggest issue of the movie, which is the reason that I am so mixed on the film. As much fun as I had, every time I was having a blast over here, I would come over to this side and be like, ugh, you almost had it. And my biggest gripe with this movie is the fact that there are too many plot lines. I understand the original Beetlejuice really didn't have the biggest plot line. It was very simple for what its story needed to be told. And that's totally fine. I love the simple story of the original one. And for the most part, like the second one is setting up like a lot of good aspects. It's having to kind of bring us back into this world and the legacy of these characters. So it does kind of take a little bit to kind of get off as specifically we're trying to understand where each and every person is in their life since it's been so long. And so many of these characters have transformed into different places in their worlds. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the slower pacing because I'm still having a blast with it. But the thing that really held it back was how many plot lines they decided to put into here. And certain characters that, while fun additions, never really come up to the moments that I needed them to. And I really say this is because it feels like there are like three story ideas for sequels here that they just didn't really execute all of them in the greatest way. They're all fun. But in terminology, when you look back at the entire film and the entire product, some of them, it's like if you take out this and rearrange this a little bit, it doesn't really change the plot. Nor if you change this and do this, like it, it always felt like you could have done more with each and every one of the plot lines. And that for me is the biggest criticism with the movie and one of the biggest reasons that it truly like I can say I like the movie. I had fun with the movie, but I feel so mixed on it because I just wanted more of those moments and it felt like the biggest problem with the film 
And I don't know if that's just because they had so many ideas over the years and they just didn't know which one to do. But like, for instance, there's a whole plot line of, like I mentioned, Astrid goes to the afterlife and Lydia has to follow in. And there's a whole a cool aspect to that that I feel like could have made for such an awesome adventure through the afterlife and to explore a little bit more of that since we just got a small touch of it in the original movie. But even then, like, I didn't feel like they really doubled down on the afterlife. Like, yeah, we learned a couple more fun things in there, but I could have used more. Everything with Monica Belushi's character in here is completely separate to that entire plot line and the way that it connects or ties in. And then the way that they actually do connect it in feels a little bit lazy and haphazard. Where that entire storyline honestly could have been its entire own movie. A couple others in here that I really don't want to get into without getting into spoilers, so I'll leave it at that, but that just felt like they weren't needed. And I feel like there was a perfect idea to have Lydia and Astrid have to go to the afterlife for one way, shape, or another that could have gotten down into there. You get more time with them. Beetlejuice is somehow running around in there. And in the end of the day, you still get the same great thematic of letting go which i really liked the themes and messages of this movie but that theme and message was lacking and i like that they tried to do something a little bit deeper than the original beetlejuice but it really felt haphazard because of all the different plot lines which again may not bother you you may have fun with it i had fun with beetlejuice beetlejuice but i definitely wanted more from the movie and i think a lot of that just comes down to what they introduce and how they ended up executing it. And that's how it came down to me. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, it definitely lets the juice loose in a classic Tim Burton fashion and all in the insane, messy, and zany ways that you would expect it. It's a good time, but one that had too many plot lines going on. Ortego's great, Ryder is of course great, and Michael Keaton is perfection. I expected a little bit more from this personally, but I had fun with it. I think you will as well. So with all that said, I'm going to give this movie a C plus. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what your favorite Tim Burton movie is. And of course, until next time, stay classy.